The aerodynamic of a modern MotoGP is not that good. If you want to understand why, have a look at this video. In this video we will talk about aerodynamics. This field is always becoming more critical and it is in the spotlight. In television you see the MotoGP prototypes full of winglets and other exotic solutions, but also the superbike and the production motorcycle are developing new solutions as well. However, today we are not going to focus our attention on winglets, but instead we are going to see how the modern MotoGP aerodynamics is developed. We will talk about the fundamentals of the aerodynamics. Let us begin by introducing one of the most essential principles, the drag. When we go forward, there is a force that is contrasting to our motion, the drag precisely. Drag is provided by the friction with the air, which is proportional to the velocity we are going. It is indicated in the picture by the letter D. It is intuitive to understand that this force is proportional to our velocity. By increasing the speed, the drag force increases. However, the thing that is not obvious to everyone is that the proportion is not linear, but it is quadratic. This means that the ratio is not of the type d proportional to v, but d proportional to v squared. In the first picture, you have a linear behavior. In the second one, you have a quadratic behavior. The first case is simple. As you increase speed, the horizontal variable, the force increases in direct proportion, the vertical variable. In the second case, as you increase speed, the force rises very fast especially after leaving the first part of the curve, the low speed section. This helps you to understand why increasing the maximum velocity of a scooter rising from 50 km per hour to 70 km per hour is relatively cheap and straightforward, while rising the same 20 km per hour to the maximum speed on a superbike rising from 300 km per hour to 320 is difficult and expensive. Actually, the drug itself is divided in different types of drug. The parasitic drug, the lift-induced drug and the wave drug. But we are not going into these details in this video, because of the always more powerful engines. Thanks to the versatility of simulating software, Together with modern computing power, this field is literally living a golden age. Companies put a lot of efforts with considerable investments to improve the aerodynamic performance of their motorcycles. So, especially looking at the super expensive MotoGP prototypes, we could say that from an aerodynamic point of view, they are near to the perfection. Well, actually, nope. Honestly, they suck. What? They are developed by the top engineers with huge investment and state-of-art computers with wind tunnels, tests on road and so on. How is that possible? Before I get fired, let me explain. Let us say that they represent the best solution available within the rules. There are in fact many restrictions to compete in the World Championship. There are restrictions in terms of size, shape, weight, there are restrictions on aerodynamic surfaces. There are also many reasons behind them. There are safety reasons, technical reasons, cost reduction reasons, and also there is the tradition. Let me provide some examples in order to be more precise. The more efficient shape is the drop, with a drop coefficient of just 0.02. And you can remember the old motorcycles with dropped shaped fairings. Even if they can provide outstanding top speed, they are not used today because of the worst handling and problems with the engine, brakes and rider cooling. Moreover, if they enclose the rider entirely, in the case of a crash, the rider could be trapped in the vehicle. To improve performances, mobile aerodynamic surfaces can be considered. However, they require development, maintenance and control costs. To limit the budget to compete in the World Championship, today they are not allowed. You have to bear in mind that, generally speaking, a motorcycle 
with the rider is bulky and has a bluff body. There are discontinuities in the shape that induce flow separation. Mainly because of the rider, the wall system is far from being a perfect streamlined body. When I gave you the list of the technical reasons, lastly I said tradition. To understand this point we need to do a step back. I need to start with the question, why do manufacturers compete in different world championships? For instance, why do they spend millions to compete in the expensive MotoGP class? For fashion, definitely not. They compete for visibility because it has a direct effect on sales. If I leave total freedom to engineers to develop a vehicle with no compromises in terms of aerodynamics, I'm sure of at least two things. They will spend a lot of money and they will come out with something that doesn't look like a motorcycle. To give you a rough idea, they could come up with electronically controlled mobile winglets with big steel fairings that use the ground effect like in Formula 1. The rider with the frame could lean inside the fairings with a steel external part that could look similar to a car. These, together with other exotic solutions, would not recall the idea of a motorcycle that you have today. If the product that you see on television does not even remember your favorite manufacturer's dream motorcycle, you would have a weak association process in your mind. There would be fewer chances of going to buy it. So this is another strong implicit constraint in the development of this field. In the future, of course, the culture will change and it will be easier for us to recognize motorcycles, vehicles slightly more different from what we see today. After all, if we look at the first motorcycle created in history, it is simple to notice how the culture has evolved. Let us now have a look at how the aerodynamics of a modern motorcycle are developed. What are the available weapons that engineers can rely on? There are three main tools and they are used at different stages. The first stage is the CFD analysis. The material that has been designed is studied by performing simulation on computers. In this phase, the geometries are changed and corrected to reach the desired target. After this stage, the prototypes can be realized and tested in a wind tunnel. After this step, the components can be modified or, if they perform as expected, they could be used for the track test. This is the last and most crucial step. Here is where the rider will express their feelings about the new solution. If the rider approves, the component can go further in the process and it can then be used on the motorcycle. So you have now got the idea of what is behind the motorcycle aerodynamics. If you want to improve your performances, your consciousness as a rider, if you want to understand your motorcycle better, improving your safety, we have the right material for you. Our knowledge is based on working experience of top-of-the-class MotoGP engineers. If you want more videos and other useful material, just click in the link in the description and you will discover more about the Motorcycle Academy project. I'll see you in the next lecture.